Well, good morning, church family, and welcome to our online gathering. I want to read from Psalm 19, verse 14 together, and it says this, Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Let's pray. Father, I ask that this would be true of us, your people at Sandy Assembly of God. May the words of our mouth and the meditation of our heart be acceptable, be pleasing to you. Thank you that you are our rock and our redeemer. We thank you for your transforming power. Would you minister to our hearts through this service, we pray, and would you be greatly glorified in and through our lives. Jesus, we worship you. Amen. Amen. No 
Hi, we're Carl and Terry Gibbs. We're your missionaries to Africa, serving with Africa's Hope. This is our COVID-19 post-lockdown report. Though we haven't been able to go to Africa these past few months, we've been busy in our home offices creating Bible study materials for pastors, Bible school students, and new converts. We know this has been an extremely difficult time for your church, and yet you've continued to support us faithfully every month. We are so grateful. In spite of COVID, this is a very exciting time to be ministering in, in Africa. We have over 23,000 students in our Bible schools and extension sites that are studying. Many of them are asking for help, but I'll be traveling to give seminars and teaching before the end of the year in Tanzania, Nigeria, Togo, and Angola. Thank you so much for your support and thank you for believing in us and for your commitment to our ministry. Let me invite you to turn in your Bibles to the Gospel of Matthew chapter 12 this morning. Matthew chapter 12. You know, there's a lot of talk out there about a healthy heart, right? If you're eating certain food, probably right there on the box, you'll have read advertisements about how their product can help as part of a healthy diet for a healthy heart. For example, I have a few things here. Uh, Cheerios. This is something popular in my house, especially with Daniel, my 10-year-old son. Cheerios says on the box, can help lower cholesterol as part of a heart-healthy diet. Or another one, I think something most of us like, um, planter's peanuts. Heart-healthy may reduce the risk of heart disease. And then, one of my favorites, oatmeal, uh, something I have maybe four days a week or so, says this, as part of a heart-healthy diet, oatmeal can help reduce cholesterol. You know, there is a lot of talk about having a healthy heart. But my concern is not for your blood-pumping organ. Uh, you know, I'm concerned for that, but much more concerned about how it goes with your spiritual heart. How it goes with who you really are on the very inner core your affections and desires and emotions and thoughts, who you are deep down in the core of your being. You see, church, who we are will eventually show up in how we speak. Who we are will eventually show up in how we speak. Jesus said, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Jesus said that the greatest commandment was, you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart and with all of your soul, and with all of your mind. And so as we talk about our hearts this morning, I want to encourage you just to be open to the Holy Spirit 
pinpointing areas in your life that He desires to transform and change. That we would come to Christ and receive all the transformation that He desires to bring into our hearts today. So I'd invite you to look with me at Matthew 12, starting at verse 33. Jesus says, Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or make the tree bad and its fruit bad. For the tree is known by its fruit. You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Let's pray. Father, I ask that you would speak to us today through your word in a life-changing way. I ask that you'd help us to grow and understand what it means to walk with you. Thank you that you are the one that transforms our hearts. And so I pray that you would, even today, bring more transformation in your people. I ask if anybody listening to this, Father, is not following you, that you would speak and that you would bring them to a place of faith and salvation, that they would call upon the name of the Lord, that their hearts might be changed and they might become a new creation in Christ. We ask that you would minister to our hearts today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, this is a strong text, isn't it? Jesus is confronting these religious leaders who like to put on a good show outwardly, but really it is not well with their hearts, and their words are revealing that their heart is not in the right place. In fact, they are, they are not recognizing that Jesus is the Messiah. And their words are revealing that they really don't know the Father, because if they don't know the Son, then they do not know the Father. Jesus makes it clear that a person and who they are will show up in the words that they speak. And so the question for us today is, what do our words reveal about our heart condition, the health of our hearts? There's a story told of a, of a man who was in desperate need to make some money. So he went down to the local zoo uh, applying to try to get a job, maybe feeding the animals to make some money. The manager of the zoo had no openings, but seeing how big the man was, he offered him another position. He said, our gorilla died the other day, and that was one of our most popular exhibits. If we got you a special gorilla suit, would you wear it around for a few days, and, 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 and we'll pay you well uh, for it? Well, the guy was so desperate for money that he agreed. He actually did quite well uh, for the next few days. He dressed up in the gorilla suit. He beat his chest. He, sh uh, he shook the bars of his cage. And huge crowds were beginning to gather and watch him. Money was good. But one day, while he was swinging on the trapeze, he lost his grip and landed right in the middle of the lion's den. The huge beast gave out a ferocious roar. The man in the gorilla suit realized he, he couldn't cry for help without giving up that he was a person, that he was a fake. And so he slowly walked backwards away from the lion, hoping to climb out of the cage. The lion, however, had a very hungry look on his face and followed him. Finally, in desperation, the gorilla cried, Help! <laughs> Immediately, the lion whispered loudly, shh, or you'll get us both fired. <laughs> you'll get us both fired. I guess the lion was really a person dressed up as a lion as well. You know, people can pretend all sorts of things about themselves, but who they are eventually shows up in how they speak. Who they are eventually shows up in the words that come from their mouths. So Jesus says, and we'll work our way through these verses, in verse 33, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or the tree bad and its fruit bad, for the tree is known by its fruit. Now Jesus loved to use things that people were familiar with, and certainly they were familiar with 
trees, and, and he would use these things to make spiritual points. They knew what a good tree was and a bad tree. A good tree was one that bare good fruit. A bad tree bore bad fruit, or maybe we could even say no fruit at all. And Jesus was likening a person to either a fruitful good tree or a bad tree that does not bear good fruit. You know, the type of fruit that comes from our lives shows the type of heart condition that we have. And that fruit is most often, most clearly displayed in the words that come from our mouths. How do we speak to others? How do we speak about others? And how do we speak about our God? These are important questions to ask ourselves. So Jesus says in verse 34, You brood of vipers, how can you speak good when you are evil? So he's calling them a den of snakes. <laughs> he's saying, you den of snakes. He is calling them this because he cares enough to point out to them that they are on the path of destruction and that they are leading others down a path of harm. Jesus tells them that as a result of, of being evil, they speak evil. Now, this doesn't mean that an evil person can never say something nice or something good or even pretend with their words to be kind and good. But it does mean that who they are will eventually start showing up in how they speak. Jesus says, for out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Who you are is eventually going to come out in your words. A good indicator of a person's heart health is their words. Whether good or bad, our words show us how it goes with our spiritual condition, with our hearts. And so when I ask at the beginning of the message, how is it going with your heart? How is your heart health? You can answer this question by beginning to think over the last couple of weeks and thinking about the words that come from your mouth, thinking about the things that you say and, and how you communicate and how you speak to others and about others and how you speak about Christ. Jesus' um, brother James wrote in the book of James these words. He says, from the same mouth come blessing and cursing. My brothers, these things ought not to be so. We shouldn't have uh, speak, you know, blessing and then cursing and blessing and cursing. We should, as followers of Christ, speak blessing. We should speak truth. We should speak wisely and righteously. James says, does a spring pour forth from the same opening, both fresh and salt water? Well, that wouldn't be a good spring, would it? Can a fig tree, my brothers, bear olives or a grapevine produce figs? Neither can a salt pond yield fresh water. So what do our words reveal about the condition of our hearts? Now I know as a, as a church we have some amazing, amazing people and their words and the way they speak to others and the way they speak about others shows that their hearts are in a good spot with our Lord. But I wonder today if we would just allow the Spirit to speak and to show us what are our words revealing about the condition of our spiritual heart? The amazing news is that it is possible to change by the grace of God. Then maybe you realize over the last few weeks that, that there's some issues there. And I just got great news for us. You can change. In fact, maybe you're not a good tree at all. Maybe you're a bad tree. And the good news is that you can change, that in Christ you can become a new creation, that the old can be gone, the new comes. And so if your heart is, your words are revealing that your heart has some issues, the first question to ask ourselves is, am I genuinely a changed person, right? What sort of fruit is coming from my life? Am, am I a good tree? Am I a, a saved person? Am I a new creation in Christ? The Bible says to us to examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith. Examine yourselves. A lot of people claim to be followers of Jesus that are not followers. 
Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord. They'll speak as if they were followers of His, and Jesus will say, depart from me, I never knew you. And so the question is, are you genuinely a follower of Christ? Have you surrendered to Him? Have you turned to Him for salvation? Do my words demonstrate to both myself and others that I am a new creation in Christ? Right? Is it obvious and evident that I am changed from the inside out? This is where it starts. This is where a healthy heart starts, is having a new heart, being set free by the blood of Christ and be made a new creation in Christ so that you can bear fruit by His power and by His grace. And so are you a follower of His? Do you recognize that you have, have sinned and fallen short of God's glory? The Bible says that all we like sheep have gone astray. Each one of us has gone their own way. The Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That the wages of sin is, is, is death. The Bible doesn't just say that we're lost. The Bible even goes farther to say that we are actually enemies of, of Christ before we come to Him. We're rebels. We're, we're living our own way. We're ignoring Him and we're dishonoring Him in our lives. But God comes and He calls to us and reaches out to us. And as we call out to Him for salvation, He promises to make you new. In John chapter 3, we read this, verses 19 to 21. This is the verdict. Light has come into the world, but people loved darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. Everyone who does evil hates the light and will not come into the light for fear that their deeds will be exposed. But whoever lives by the truth comes into the light so that, so that it may be seen plainly that what they have done has been done in the sight of God. Have you recognized your sin and have you come to the light? Have you come to Christ? Have you believed that Jesus came to this earth, that He lived a perfect life, that He died in your place for your sin, and that He rose again on the third day? And have you trusted Him for salvation? Have you called to Him for salvation? Have you, have you cried out, Jesus, make me new, wash me clean, forgive me, make me a new creation in you, save me? I don't know exactly how you want to explain it. There's many ways and many words we can explain it, but you've put your faith in Jesus and what He has done for you, and you've called to Him that He would wash you and cleanse you and make you new. If you haven't done so, do so today. Put your faith in Christ. The Bible says that everyone who calls upon the name of the Lord will be saved. And so call upon Him today. As a result of Christ living in you by His Spirit, then you have the power to bear great fruit. You have the power to live a life that is transformed because Christ lives in you and, and, and streams of living water flow through you. And so fruit begins to emanate from our lives, begins to show up in how we speak, right? Now, I've been sharing each week a Boys and Girls Missionary Challenge story. These come from the, the BGMC website. And these are true stories usually shared by missionaries of what God has done um, around the world and how God is moving in mighty ways. And the one I want to share with you today is something that took place in Romania. And it goes like this. No water. Pastor Philemon stood with missionary Ian Hall at the riverbank and looked at the low trickle of water that ran through it. Behind him stood 40 new believers ready to be baptized but it had been a very hot June, and after four months of drought, with no rain at all, the river was much too low to perform a proper baptism. Pastor Philemon said to Ian, how are we going to have a baptismal service in this river? There's hardly any water. Ian joked, saying perhaps we can lay them down and roll them over to wet both sides. Pastor Philemon looked at the 40 new believers, they were so full of hope now that they had found Jesus. 
Many people in Romania were hungry for God. Every time the church was open, it was full. The people had been under communist rule for too long. The communist government had told them there was no God. Finally, the people revolted and the communist government was overthrown. When freedom came to the country, many churches were planted. People were eager to hear the gospel and eager to believe God for salvation and for healing. Missionary Ian and Sheila Hall had come to work with Pastor Philemon at the Pentecostal church called Living Stone in Romania. The church grew and grew so much that it established several branch churches. One of the branch churches was planted in the gypsy community. In just a few months, 40 people had made decisions to follow Jesus. Now they wanted to be baptized. As they stood there on the riverbank, several other people began to gather around. These were unbelievers. They knew that the new believers had come to be baptized. They began to laugh and to make fun of them because of the lack of water in the river. Missionary Ian asked Pastor Philemon what he planned to do. Pastor Philemon looked at the new believers, then he looked at the unbelievers who continued to mock them. Finally, he said to Ian, You go ahead and preach. I will gather the church leaders and we will pray that God will provide the water. And so the service started. They began with singing. Then the new believers gave their testimonies. A local Romanian man gave a brief word. Then Ian preached. Whoosh! Swoosh! As Ian came to the end of his sermon, suddenly there was a sound of rushing water. The people turned to look and were amazed to see an abundance of water rushing down the riverbed. Soon the river was full with more than enough water to baptize the believers. God had performed a miracle. One by one, the 40 new believers stepped into the water and were baptized. Pastor Philemon and his assistant dipped each person under the water and brought them back up again. When the last person came up from the water and stepped onto the riverbank, the water level dropped back down to where it had been before. Incredible. <laughs> Later, Pastor Philemon learned that up in the mountains, some 60 miles away, there had been a heavy rainfall. One of the reservoirs had become so full that the authorities decided to open the floodgates and release some water to relieve the pressure. <laughs> The water arrived at just the right time and stayed just long enough to baptize all the new believers. Isn't God amazing? Jesus said, whoever believes in me, streams of living water will flow from within him. That day, a great stream of river water flowed mightily for those whose hearts were full of the living water, Jesus. Even the unbelievers saw the great miracle that day and could not deny that God had answered the prayers of His people. Perhaps one day they too will come to faith and be baptized in that very river. God is mighty, isn't He? And as He comes and transforms us, you know, uh, rivers of water, streams of water flow from our lives. In other words, we become a new creation and we have God's enablement and power we're transformed from the inside out, and we bear fruit in Him. And so, church, do you know Jesus? Have you received Christ, the living water? Um, those of you that are watching, maybe you don't attend Sandy Assembly, and you're watching this message today. We are so glad that you're watching it. Have you put your confidence and faith in Christ and what He has done for you on the cross? Have you called upon Him to make you new? And if you have, then streams of living water will flow in you. You'll have the ability and power by His grace to bear great fruit. Amen? And so this is where it starts. This is critical. We want to be, bear good fruit. We have to be a healthy tree. And a healthy tree is a new creation in Christ. Somebody that has responded to the gospel and received Jesus. Amen. Then we come to verses 35 and 36, uh, or actually 35 through 37, says this. The good person out of his good treasure brings forth good. Amen. And the evil person out of his evil treasure brings forth 
evil. I tell you, on the day of judgment, people will give an account for every careless word they speak. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. As we draw to a close, we need to realize that we as Christians who have received Christ have the ability to bear great fruit, but that we are still works in progress. And sometimes we fall short, and our words reveal that, don't they? They reveal areas of our heart that we need God to transform. The Koine Greek word for heart is the word cardia, from where we get our word cardiologist. Jesus is the master cardiologist, the one that can transform our hearts. And as God's people that have received Christ, perhaps you realize there are some areas of your life that God is beginning to pinpoint, that your words have revealed there are some areas that God needs to do some spiritual heart surgery on. Maybe He needs to place a spiritual stint <laughs> in an area of your heart. Maybe you even need some open heart surgery. There's some real change that needs to take place. Come to Him today and say, God, would you help me and transform me? Would you work in my heart? It's been well said that you forget to pray one day and you know. You you forget to pray a few days and those around you begin to know, right? Because they they, they see there's, there's just something different about the way you respond. To situations. And so I want to remind us that we need to do that spiritual exercise to keep a spiritually healthy heart, that we spend time in God's Word, we spend time with God's people, we spend time in prayer, and God transforms us and helps us as we walk in Him. Realize that your tongue is, is powerful. Verse 36 is, is, is pretty uh, strong verse, isn't it? Don't spout out careless words. You will give an account. Realize that whoever said sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me, was not speaking truth. It's been said that long after the wounds heal from sticks and stones, somebody's words can still cause great harm. Our words have the potential to build up or the potential to tear down. So may we be careful with our words. May we pray like David, put a guard over my mouth. And then may we realize that when our words are revealing something about us that needs to be transformed, that we would seek Christ to transform us. Once again, I'm not talking about perfection. We are works in progress, but that God is changing us day by day. When we fall short, we confess it and we turn to Him. and We ask Him, Lord, continue to transform me and, and help me. I shared a few weeks ago on a Wednesday night about how our lives are a lot like somebody carrying a cup of wa- cup cup around not of water but something in the cup around and we get bumped as we go through life and whatever's in us spills out right we don't like to get bumped but life has all sorts of obstacles and difficulties and sometimes we wonder why did that come out of my life that's not who I really am but maybe getting bumped actually revealed something that needs to be transformed and changed in us, right? So how do, how do when we're bumped in those unguarded moments, what comes forth from, from our mouths? How do we speak? Do we speak in rage? Do we speak in anger? Do we, do we speak words of slander or gossip or, 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 or profanity? Um, or do words of compassion and kindness, even when we're bumped, come out? Do we show care? Are we being transformed by Christ? I think of Jesus as He was dying for our sin. and He said, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they do. Oh, that when we face hardship and difficulty, that our words would reveal that we have Christ living in us. Here we see, and I think it's important to note this, that that It's important the words that we speak, but our words are not what gets us to heaven. Right? We are saved by grace alone, through faith alone, in Jesus alone. Not as a result of works, so that no man may boast. The reminder here, though, is that we all will stand before God one day. And if you've surrendered your life to Christ, you will be there based upon Christ's perfect life and His sacrifice for you. 
Your words then confirm that your heart has been changed. The reason our words justify us is not that our words have any sort of power, meritorious power in them to save us. We are not saved by our words. We're not saved by our works. But our words reveal whether or not a change of heart has truly taken place. And so, what are your words revealing to you today? And seek God for His help. As we draw to a close, are there areas of strength and weakness that my speech has revealed over the last few weeks? And if there's some areas of weakness, go to God and begin to seek Him for help and transformation. Did you know that according to the book of Malachi, heaven is writing your story? What we say really matters. We'll be rewarded one day in eternity. And so it really matters how we speak, how we live, the fruit we bear, how we speak to others, how we speak about others, how we proclaim Christ. Randy Alcorn, one of my favorite authors, made this comment about the book of Malachi. Malachi chapter 3. He said, Did you know that as we live our lives here in faithful reverence before our God, right now our part of the story is being written about us in a book in heaven. Malachi 3.16 tells us something amazing worth pondering. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in His presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored His name. God is a faithful rewarder. Realize He will bless you and reward you. And so that you would live for Him by His strength and by His transforming power. And so let's pray together today. Maybe you even want to place your hand on your heart today. I know we're, we're thinking of our, of our spiritual heart, but maybe you just want to place your hand upon your physical heart as we seek our Lord. Father, we are so thankful that you are the God that transforms us. And I pray that those that are not walking with you would surrender their hearts to you, that they would come to the light and they would receive salvation. And I ask, Lord, for all of us who are walking with you, that, Lord, if there are areas that our hearts need work on that is being revealed by the words of our mouth, that you would transform us and help us, Lord Jesus. We thank you for your grace and your help. We thank you for your work on our hearts. Lord, some need some pretty major work done. And I pray that you would begin right now in a powerful way, even supernaturally, to come and to, to help them and strengthen them and direct them and transform them. Lord, help us to walk in all that you have for us, that we might be salt and light to this world. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Sees that.